We've got quite a few um, diagnostic utility studies now that have been done around gluteal tendinopathy and Rita Kinsella a couple of years ago brought all of those studies together in a systematic review and meta-analysis and they uh, suggested that there should be two key tests involved and that is palpation being one of them because it's our most sensitive test so we really need that sensitive test in our test battery but we also need um, specific tests as well and tests that you know have reasonable ability to rule in and out of the condition and so they selected um, resisted abduction as the other test to pair together with uh, the palpation and that included the version of resisted abduction that we did in our diagnostic utility study and that resisted abduction we actually did in side lying in an over type position so with the hip in a position of adduction and we did resistance Um, abduction resistance in that adducted position and the reason for that was to try to really compress um, those uh, tissues the the gluteal tendons beneath the iliotibial band in that adducted position while we added that active tensile load of that contraction Um, but other studies have done resisted abduction in an abducted position so that was all sort of condensed you know within that meta-analysis but basically pairing those two together is a good place to start if for example you have a positive palpation but negative on your resisted abduction where does that leave you you can't make a diagnosis uh, just based on palpation so it's good to have another couple of tests in your test battery and the ones that came out strongest in the meta-analysis and also in our study uh, was the 30 second single leg stance test and so this is a test where we stand on one leg with the affected side so we're side onto the wall the affected side is furthest away from the wall the close side hand we just put one finger on the wall for balance and we're just going to lift up the unaffected foot And it's important where you put that other leg. Uh, It's not a stalk test. So we don't want them to lift their leg up in front because that can allow them to hitch with their hip flexors and their trunk muscles. And that might reduce the load on the abductors. So when we stand on one leg, just pick the foot up behind of the other other leg and just let it hang there so the abductors have to carry all of that body weight so the finger on the wall and they're going to stand there for up to 30 seconds now a positive is reproduction of trochanteric pain now that's really important Um, they might say oh I'm getting a bit of pain in my buttock or in my back that's obviously not a positive it does have to be that trochanteric pain and if they get that pain within a couple of seconds then that's the end of the test that they can put their foot down but if they haven't got pain initially then we want to hold them there until first pain onset or until 30 seconds if they get to 30 seconds and it's negative then that's a negative test So the um, 30 second um, single leg stance test is um, highly specific. So it's got a really good positive likelihood ratio. So when it's positive, it really helps you, um, you know, increase the likelihood that they have this condition. 